three, warm ups and cool downs. Warming up the voice prior to singing is equally important to stretching and warming up your muscles before any other physical activity that requires stamina, control and coordination of various muscle groups. Vocal warm-ups commonly consist of a series of specifically tailored vocal exercises that gently stretch and limber up the vocal cords and surrounding muscles. They also increase blood flow to the vocal apparatus and prepare the voice for a more intense workout. Your warm-up should usually last anywhere between 5 and 10 minutes and sometimes longer if you're preparing to go on stage or sing for a more lengthy period of time. Now, most singers who are just starting out may not consider singing to be a sport, but if we compare it to athletics, the fundamental physical requirements are not much different. Because we're making music and feeling emotional connection to sounds, etc., we can often forget that singing is a physical exercise. But think of an athlete going out onto the track or onto the ground without warming up and stretching their body. Generally, the risk is much higher of them straining their muscles. The same thing can happen to your vocal cords and the surrounding muscles. Because of the fatigue and wear caused by the strain and pressure that singing without warming up places on your voice, you can find yourself becoming prone to huskiness or even you losing your voice uh, periodically. You may find that you often have a sore throat or an irritating ache in your throat. In a worst case scenario, you could find that your vocal cords are damaged, which may require therapy or you may even need to go through operations to remove nodules or vocal polyps, which are like little calluses on the edges of your vocal cords. I'm not saying that, uh, this to scare you at all, but I just want you to know that these sorts of things can be easily avoided when you put the health of your voice before the emotional pleasure of belting out a tune without a warm-up, simply by implementing healthy vocal techniques. I remember when I first started singing and I was doing about three musicals a year with a local theatre company. At that time, I was singing entirely on my throat, which means I was using my neck muscles to push the sound out of my body. And amongst the many other problems this was causing for me, I found that I was getting tonsillitis around two to three times a year, simply because of the rawness of my vocal cords and muscles, which was an open invitation for viruses and infections. It wasn't fun, let me tell you. Uh, now, even though I was using poor vocal technique, I could have helped myself even a little if I'd warmed up my voice gently and effectively. And that's one thing I'd like to pass on here. Often when you're part of a singing group and it's time to do some vocal warm-ups, it's easy to get caught up in the fun of it or in the temptation to out-sing the person next to you. Unfortunately, some inexperienced conductors and directors often ask the singers to belt it out for me without realising the damage they're causing these singers to do to their voices. So if you're part of a group of singers, be aware that a warm-up is the most important time in the whole of your performance or rehearsal and it's an activity that requires extra care and respect for your vocal apparatus. If you're part of a singing group whose leader is possibly asking too much of people's voices, without giving them uh, instructions on how to do it safely, maybe you could consider having a private conversation with them, when the time is right of course, and offering them some warm-up suggestions that you consider to be of more value to both the singers around you and, in the long run, to the quality of singing that your group offers to its audiences. Okay, back to your warm-up session. The exercises that I've included in this lesson are many and varied, and it's not necessary to do all of them every time you sing. In fact, it's a great idea if you can keep your warm-up session to between around five to seven minutes, depending on the sort of singing you're going to be doing that day. For example, if you're going to be performing for an audience, I suggest a thorough warm-up session of at least 15 to 20 minutes where you not only do your vocal warm-up exercises for about 10 minutes, but you also run through your song a couple of times. 
This will not only warm up your vocal cords properly, but it will also bring your mind into focus and get your mind-body-spirit connection in the zone. Uh, the exercises in this lesson are also not in any specific order, so you can choose to use the exercises that are most effective for you in any order you like. However, I would suggest that the most gentle way of warming up your voice is through humming or sirening. And so, this is my recommendation for at least the first exercise you do in each singing session. Every voice is different, and because you are a human, Every day is going to be different in terms of your energy levels and emotional and physical well-being. So choose the exercises that can help bring focus to specific areas of your vocal technique and mix them up to suit your needs as you go along. Over time, you'll become more sensitive to the needs of your voice. So for now, just try them all out in different combinations until you get a better idea on what works for you. Okay, before we sing through the warm-up exercises together, let's prepare properly by going through a little checklist to make sure you're placing yourself in the best physical position to begin your singing for the day. Okay, in order to make it easier for your body to breathe and produce a sound without unnecessary tension, make sure that you're standing up nice and straight by aligning your spine. If you need a reminder of how to do this, I recommend going through step A of the quick fix alignment exercise in lesson one on posture. So if you need to, pause this video now and go and do that and then come back to this video and continue. Just make a note of where you are, uh, where you're up to in this video so that you can easily return to this point in the lesson when you're ready. Alright, so breathe low and slow. So now's the time to apply the breathing techniques you learned in lesson two on breath. When you inhale, make sure you breathe low, expanding your midsection. When you begin singing or exhaling, do your best to keep your rib cage expanded or suspended, remembering to allow your tummy to move inwards as you sing through the exercises. While you're singing, whenever you're singing, it's important to allow the sound to occur. I understand that it might be tempting now to make a big and beautiful sound, however there's no need for you to create a gorgeous sound at this point. Your first priority is to get the mechanics of sound production right and get the machine, which is your voice and body, running smoothly before you begin to beautify the sound. Beauty of tone comes most naturally and without too much effort once you gain more control over your vocal technique. For now, simply allow the sound to occur by singing with the same ease as though you were chatting with a friend. Trying to make a sound often creates an opportunity for force or tension to play a role in the production process. As a rule of thumb for this entire program, only sing as high or as low as is comfortable for you. You'll find that over time your vocal range will expand and you'll be able to sing more notes with more ease and more comfort. And remember, we're simply warming up the voice at this point and to push your voice at any time, especially during the warm-up stage when the voice is particularly vulnerable to strain, uh, this can result in a swelling of the vocal cords, huskiness and, if done consistently, vocal damage. So take it easy, relax and enjoy the process, man. Sirening exercise is designed to warm up the whole voice without stress to the vocal cords and surrounding muscles. It's a good idea to make this one of the first warm-up exercises you do in your practice session. Now, place your tongue in the NG position, as in sing, mm, with your bottom jaw dropped. It should feel relaxed and loose on its hinges. Your teeth should be apart by about a finger's width, and as you get higher, should open to about two fingers width, like this. Mm -hmm. 
Your aim is to start on a comfortable low note, whether that be at the beginning of the exercise or not, and then we're going to siren up to a higher note and back down again. Kind of feels like you're singing on a roller coaster, you know. As you do this exercise, your tongue should also be relaxed and just resting gently behind the back of your bottom teeth. Before we go into this exercise, let's have a little practice of moving our voices like a siren. Ready? Here we go. Okay? So if you experience breaks in the voice as you sing this exercise like this, like that, Lighten off the tone a little at the bottom, like this. It's not necessary nor advisable to try and make a big, loud sound during this or any other warm-up exercises. It can also help you glide through these breaks in your voice by elongating the back of your neck as you're sirening upwards, like this. So I'm stretching out the back of my neck there. This has the effect of creating space in your pharynx, which is the cavity or resonator behind your nose and at the back of your mouth. I'll explain that more in lesson four. As you sing higher in pitch throughout this exercise, you should also drop the jaw a little more, as I showed before, like this. This is also known as vowel modification, vowel modification, which is commonly used to create more space in the pharynx when singing vowels on higher notes. This, uh, this space makes it easier for the sound vibration to travel up into the head cavity, but we'll talk more about that in lesson 12. However, during this exercise, even though we're not singing on a vowel, it will help to release any tension you may be holding in your tongue, your jaw and your throat area. Okay, let's do it. is another great way to gently warm up the voice while placing the resonance in the bones and cavities in your face and head. The aim of the exercise is to use a consistent flow of air, enough to create a clear sound whilst inducing a vibrating or buzzing sensation in your face, initially around the lower jaw and as you ascend, moving upwards through the nasal cavity, up through your cheekbones, eye sockets and into your forehead and skull. 
A great way to concentrate more fully on the buzzing sensation is to do this exercise with your eyes closed. Important tip, be sure that you don't bounce your larynx while moving to the next note down like this. Okay, instead try to make the transition between each note smooth like this. This will help keep your throat relaxed and your airflow consistent. Okay, let's sing the exercise together. Ready? exercise is also one that helps warm and stretch the vocal muscles in a very gentle way. In fact, you'll notice while doing this exercise that it resembles the feeling of sighing and that's the approach you should take. In this exercise, you're singing downwards from a higher note to a lower note and then back up again to the higher note. This sighing repeats itself twice, so there's a total of three cycles. It's important to remember during this exercise to maintain a relaxed jaw and not intend for the sound to be loud or powerful. Remember, you're gently warming up your voice. Another technique that you should become familiar with as your technique develops is to modify your vowels to a more open sound when singing in the higher registers of your voice. We talked about this briefly in the previous exercise. In this sighing exercise, the higher notes are sung on an E vowel, so be aware of where the higher notes are and drop your jaw like we did in the last exercise. Otherwise the E sound can close off the voice a little. It will also help to raise your soft palate slightly so that there's more space inside the back of your mouth. This will make it easier to sing the higher notes. You can find more information on vowel modification and the soft palate in the lesson on diction and musicality. Okay, so let's now sing the sighing exercise.
This is a great little exercise that will not only help you to continue to warm up your voice, but it also works on loosening the jaw. As you're starting in the lower register of your voice, there's no need to implement any vowel modification to begin with. However, as you ascend and move into the upper registers, just allow your jaw, which is very relaxed, to drop open a little more to allow space inside the mouth and pharynx. Remember to keep the voice light on the lower notes for now to help you easily transition from the lower notes to the higher notes and avoid experiences such as vocal breaks. Okay, so let's get straight into this exercise. Ma 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 This exercise will help you achieve a more efficient connection between the breath and the voice and also develop your breath control. Using the g sound as in gi assists in bringing the chords together aka adduction so that you achieve a clean connection between the breath and the tone. This will eliminate wasting precious breath as you begin each phrase. Your focus should be on controlling your breath flow keeping it even and steady throughout the phrase. If you find that you can't make it through each phrase in its entirety on one breath, that's perfectly okay. Make it your goal and keep working at the exercise using the same concept outlined in the S exercise in the breath control section of lesson two. Because we're singing on an eval during this exercise, it can often be easy to allow the jaw to close and the teeth to come much closer together, restricting the amount of sound that comes out and also creating tension in the tongue, the jaw and the neck, especially when you're singing the higher notes. So it's important to keep your jaw relaxed and implement the vowel modification technique we spoke about earlier as you ascend in pitch. Okay, ready to sing this one with me? Here we go.
This counting exercise is another great exercise for breath control. It'll also give you an opportunity to practice your snap breaths, remember, like this. So remember to resist the temptation to breathe high into the chest when you're taking snap breaths. Imagine that the breath you take in is very heavy or it may help you to visualize the breath dropping deep into the body. You'll also want to make sure that you're breathing through your mouth when you take a snap breath. The reason for this is that breathing through the nose not only requires you to close your mouth and throat between phrases, which takes extra effort and time, but it can also cause muscle tension as a result of having to drag the air into your body through a much smaller orifice. And it's quite noisy, okay? So this counting exercise will also get you working on your pronunciation and articulation of consonants and vowels together and will help you practice singing with clear diction. So let's give it a go, shall we? So now that we've covered some warm-up exercises that you can do, let's now talk about cool-downs. Cooling down the voice after a practice session is equally important to warming the voice before beginning singing. An average cool-down session should last for around three to five minutes and often consists of simple exercises that keep the voice moving, so to speak, but which are designed to gradually work the vocal muscles less and less in order that they begin cooling down, hence the term cool down. During singing, increased amounts of blood are directed to the areas around your vocal apparatus, including the vocal cords, throat and larynx. Cooling down is a gentle process through which you're helping your voice return to its resting state or pre-singing state, decreasing the blood flow and encouraging the vocal muscles to relax. If you choose not to do a gentle cool down after a physical practice session of any type, you run the risk of decreasing the potential muscular development of your voice, which can be up to around 20%, by the way, and you also run the risk of having a sore voice following a practice session. To perform a vocal cool down, a good exercise is to try quiet lip rolls up and down your vocal range like this. <laughs> Or softly and quietly hum five note descending scales like this. Remember that this is a vocal cool down, so all singing you do from here on in should be gentle and relaxing. The idea is to bring things down from peak level, just like bringing your heart and breathing rate down after an intense physical workout. Having said that, it's important at all times to keep your technique in check, even during cool downs. This means you'll need to check in with your posture, your breathing, and any of the other techniques that you're learning throughout the rest of this program. Okay, in a moment, I'll give you the first of a few, but effective exercises you can use to cool down your voice after each and every singing session that you do.
This first exercise is a great way to begin cooling down your voice while still singing on open sounds. In this case, we're going to use a variety of vowels. When you sing this exercise yourself with the accompanying audio CD, you can choose to focus on one vowel at a time and do the exercise two or three times if you like, all the while singing very gently, of course. For example, you may want to do the exercise through on the OO vowel and then repeat the exercise using the E vowel. After that, you could repeat the exercise once again using the NG sound, that mmm sound, or simply by humming through the exercise gently. Three times through should be enough to help your voice return to its pre-singing state. Okay, so for the purposes of this exercise, I'm going to sing the OO vowel for about four cycles, then I'll change to an NG sound for about three cycles, and then finish up on the humming sound. Okay, here we go. Ready, please, Mr. Music. Another simple yet effective way to cool down your voice is by using lip rolls or lip bubbles as they're sometimes called. During this exercise you're still using your voice but instead of singing an open sound we're now going to take a little more pressure off the larynx and sing through our lips so to speak. It's important when doing lip rolls to get just the right balance of air pressure and lip pressure. For example, if I apply too much air pressure, my lips will blow apart like this. <coughs> However, if, my, if I purse my lips too tightly, I'll get more of a buzzing sound rather than a bubbling sound like this. <coughs> On the other hand, if I use just the right amount of breath pressure, but don't apply enough lip pressure, again, my lips will simply blow apart. So play around with this sound until you find the right pressure between your lips and your breath. 
If you're finding this to be a difficult sound to make, try placing your fingers gently on your cheeks like this and blow gently. This often releases the muscles surrounding your lips, making it easier to strike that necessary balance between your lips and breath. Okay, let's give this exercise a try. Here we go. So as you know from the sirening we did during your warm-up exercises, it's very gentle on the voice, making it a perfect cool-down exercise as well. However, during this cool-down siren, we're going to sing just from high to low to encourage the voice and surrounding muscles to relax, like this. Remember, your teeth should be apart by about a finger's width during the sirening process and your tongue should also be relaxed and just resting gently behind the back of your bottom teeth. Okay, here we go with our final cool down for this lesson.
So that brings us to the end of lesson three. During this lesson, I've stressed the importance of vocal warm-ups and cool-downs in relation to strength building and your overall vocal health. No matter where you're singing, always remember to include these exercises and techniques into your routine. As you advance technically, you may find that some of the other exercises in this program suit your needs more effectively, especially when it comes to warming up your voice. When that time comes, feel free to choose whichever exercises work best for you. But if I were to repeat one piece of advice, that would be to always start with some humming or sirening. These are great exercises that will help your voice avoid the shock of a harshly commenced workout session. Okay, it's almost time to begin working through the technical aspects of your singing. So I'll see you in a moment for lesson four, where you'll discover how to most effectively access and engage all of your vocal registers. In the meantime, this is Ray Henry and happy singing. <laughs>